my story I wanted to tell is actually my, my about my wife and uh, kind of the theme of the message today, uh, going for it, making really cool stuff happen. Um, so I don't know, I think it was about six months ago-ish, somewhere around there, uh, six months ago, uh, my wife comes home and says, hey, I want you to hear this, this really cool band. And uh, we introduce songs and music to each other all the time. And she played this uh, a song by a band called Vancouver Sleep Clinic. Vancouver Sleep Clinic. And I just realized I should have added that. I'm going to type it real quick. Uh, Vancouver Sleep Clinic. I'll put it up on the screen uh, so that you guys can see it. And uh, there we go. Vancouver Sleep Clinic. And um, she, I listened to this song, and it was called Someone to Stay. And really cool song. Uh, the guy has a really unique style. He sings like kind of this falsetto thing. It's a really kind of a chill or, you know, a laid back kind of a sound. And um, I really liked it right off the bat. I really liked it. And uh, so I started listening to more of it. And it became one of my regular, I put it on at work. It's just really cool to have in the background, uh, kind of a chill, kind of a music keeps me de-stressed kind of a thing. <laughs> um, and uh, I just really enjoy the guy's music. And uh, so on a whim, I, I shot the, uh, I went and looked up his Facebook page and uh, I shot him a message, uh, you know, shot the band or whatever. It's really, it's one guy from Australia, but you know, he has like other musicians that work with him, but it's mainly, you know, one guy would do all the stuff. Um, and I shot him a message on his page and um, I just said, uh, 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 sorry, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. I just said on his page, uh, hey, you know, my wife introduced me to your music. I'm really loving it. Keep up the great work. So I, I, I sent that message. I did not respect, uh, expect a single reply back uh, at all. And now keep in mind, this guy's not huge, right? Uh, his biggest hit on YouTube uh, has 3.8 million hits, which is not small, right? Don't get me wrong. Um, and uh, just recently, he had a song played on uh, the big TV hit right now, The Good Doctor. Um, that was only like a month ago that I we, we were watching the show and right in the middle of the show, his song is playing and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is him, you know? Um, so anyway, um, we uh, I, I send that message out and um, a couple weeks later, it was probably about two or three weeks later, uh, I get a little pop-up on my screen from Vancouver Sleep Clinic. It says, thanks, Joe, really appreciate it. And that was it. And I was like, holy cow, you know? So then I'm like, you know, well, it's probably somebody that's managing his page or whatever else, you know. Uh, but I, I reply, right? And I say, why not, you know? I tell him about my show, um, the Why No Wine show, and I said, hey, man, you know, if you're ever in Houston on tour, I would love to have you on. And again, two to three weeks later go by, and he replies back, that sounds great. Let's stay in touch. Something like that, you know? And again, I'm like, hmm. I said, hey, I'm basically nobody. I've got this little show going on, you know. It's got some traction. It's getting some views. I would love to do an interview with you. Would you be open to it? And he replied back. Again, like two or three weeks later, and he replied back, and he said, sure. Send me over the questions. And... He gave me his email address. Now, I, I you know I, I know a lot of musicians are used to doing like the interviews and then the post to a blog or, or whatever you know that kind of thing. So I, you know that's what I think he got that idea. I want to do a live interview like right here on the uh, you know the, the video type of thing, which I'm still working on by the way. Um, but anyway, I sent over the email to him and didn't hear back from him for quite a while. And I was kind of like, oh dang, you know, whatever. I was uh, trying to make it happen, you know, that kind of a thing. And uh, and then just about uh, a week ago, I get a reply, uh, again, on Facebook Messenger, and he says, um, you know, oh, my gosh, Joe, I'm so sorry. Um, I, I, I just saw these questions come through, and um, I, I'm going to get right on this, and I'll email them back to you. 
And he, was, he said, I'm, I apologize, I've been very busy. Well, he's been in the studio, and he's released several new songs already in preparation for uh, his new album coming out. So as a musician and having recorded in the studio m more than once, actually, uh, I know that that is a really, really stressful, busy period of time. So I was not surprised by the delay at all. Uh, and then the following day, or over the weekend, uh, I just got in um, two emails from him. And uh, he had answered all the questions. And in the last email, I'm going to read this to you. In the last, he sent me a second email, and it said, Thanks, Joe. Really great questions. Interviewers can tend to be lazy sometimes, so it's really nice to have questions from someone who's clearly invested time into the music. I appreciate it, man. Keep up the great work. Now, how cool is that? Right? My point in sharing that was to say, that whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. All right? So the title of my little chat today was Going For It, Making Really Cool Stuff Happen. I want to tell you guys today that whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. Belief precedes everything. Hear me on that. Belief precedes everything. You have to create it in your mind first. You have to see it in your mind first. So what are you working on? What are you working towards? Have you clearly defined it? Do you know what it looks like? Is it written down? How you're going to accomplish it? Do you have a, a plan? Right? Spend time dwelling on that which you're working towards. See it in your mind's eye. Uh, there's a famous movie uh, called The Pianist. And I, I forget the guy's name. I always forget the guy's name. Um, I'm going to see if I can look it up real quick. Um, that it's based on uh, this, this famous pianist. Um, it was uh, directed by Roman Polanski, uh, starring Adrian Brody. Uh, yeah, okay. This is why I never can remember the name, because it's impossible. Vladislaw Spielman. Okay, so I know I butchered that. <laughs> but but uh, uh, it's like, like Shelly says, came in late. Who are you talking about? Uh, ah, yes. Uh, your reality is, yeah, check this out. I am absolutely going to show that. What's going on, Shelly? Ben said, your reality is whatever you accept it to be. Amen on that one. Uh, Shelly said, um, uh, came in late. Who are you talking about? Uh, so, Shelly, there's a, a band, a small band. It's a, a group called Vancouver Sleep Clinic. I say small. They've been aired on national TV in a uh, The Good Doctor. One of their songs was played in there. Uh, on uh, Spotify, they're getting 1.2 million uh, listens a month. And on YouTube, his biggest song is currently right around 4 million. Uh, so, I just said, what the heck? and tried, reached out to him, and, and got an interview. And I'm still working on a live interview. I'm going to make that happen. Um, Tony says, yes, Joe, preach. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I get on a roll, man, and this is a Sunday. This is a Sunday. I'm sorry, Sunday. This is a Monday morning uh, conversation here, you know, going for it, making things happen. Uh, I was referencing here this this guy um, that was the, the movie The Pianist was about with uh, Adrian Brody, who was a, a German Jewish or a Polish Jewish uh, composer, uh, very very accomplished, famous. Uh, but the craziest thing happened: uh, the Germans picked him up, brought him into the concentration camp, and he was in this concentration camp for a number of years. And you know, I mean, it was a concentration camp. All right, it was that. When he came out, he was even better as a performer and a composer. And the critics were really kind of stunned by his skill and the development of his skill while he was in a concentration camp. And they asked him in an interview, uh, they said, how could you have developed your skill while you were in a concentration camp? You didn't even have a piano. How could you play? And his response was brilliant. He said, what are you talking about? All I had to do was play. 
He goes, I played every piece I ever knew. I worked on new material all day long in my mind. He played in his mind. It has been proven that mental practice is about as 80% efficient as actual physical practice. That's how powerful the mind is. So whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. And the first place it has to start is in your mind. You have to be able to see it. You have to believe it. Believe it. It has to be real and possible in your mind. That's such a critical point, folks. It has to be real and possible in your mind. If you're kind of that, that inner voice is saying, yeah, I'm not going to do that. Like over the weekend, I was saying, I need to go to the gym Monday morning. <laughs> and my mental reaction was, yeah, I'm not going to do that. And I already had a couple of objections and everything else, some other stuff I needed to get done this morning, including this broadcast. And uh, so I already knew I wasn't going to do it. Uh, but you, when you set that goal, when you see the vision, whatever else, it has to be possible in your mind. So what's one of the, the, the first things that you can do to make that happen? And this is a big deal, right? Only quality people. Who the heck do, are you surrounding yourself with? Uh, let me tell you, I've had family members I had to cut out of my life. I had family members I had to cut out of my life. Did you hear that? You have to be willing sometimes to make hard decisions about the people that you keep in your life. And if you're keeping somebody in your life that is seriously negative, that every time you're talking ideas and creativity and goals and pushing forward, and you're talking about the latest book you've read and all that kind of stuff, and they're shooting it down, there's negative, 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 you better either excise that person out of your life or understand who they are. Understand that they are baggage that you are adding to your weight that you believe you have enough strength to pull across the finish line with you, all right? See it that way, all right? Uh, you know, if you're bla blazing out of the burning house, uh, you don't want to pick up any extra baggage to slow you down. However, if it's your infant child, you may make the decision to pick up the infant child and get them out of the burning house, all right? So my point is, is that some people, you may want to haul along, but understand that they are baggage moving forward. Listen to this. Some people are so negative that when they walk into dark rooms, they start to develop. <laughs> you hear me? Ah, that's a less Brownism. Uh, I love that one. All right. Some people are so negative that when they walk into dark rooms, they start to develop. you got to make the conscious decision to get those people out of your life. Make the conscious decision to rid yourself of that negative influence. Let me tell you, the negative voice that is in your head is hard enough. Life is hard enough. Most people, when they try something for the first time and fail, they are convinced that they are simply not good for that. You go on TV, you look terrible. I'm convinced I was not meant to be on TV. I went on the radio. I stuttered. I stammered. I'm convinced I, I shouldn't be on the radio. How about this? Nobody is born anything. If you think that, that people are born to do something, I would contend that, you, that you're wrong. Uh, every person that you can think of as naturally talented uh, or even better than that, every name a child prodigy. Name someone who came out as a child and was just like blew your socks off. Mozart at the age of six composing his first piece at nine composing his first symphony. Tiger Woods, two years old, like putting stuff and doing things. And like, you know, by the time he was four or six years old, he's like, you know, being a pro golfer, it was insane, right? Uh, name any child prodigy you can think of, and I will tell you that they all had something in common. They had 10,000 hours to mastery, and they had a coach in their life who was in a position to teach them. Uh, Mozart's father was the court uh, musician. He was the court, uh, you know, whatever they call it back then. Uh, but he played for the king, and so he was in a position to train Mozart. And by the time Mozart was six, he had already been practicing for hours and hours and hours a day. Same thing with Tiger Woods. Name anybody that you think of as naturally talented, and they will have put in the hours. Uh, so you have to be willing to step up to the plate and put in the effort. And the last thing you need in your life is somebody telling you you can't do it. It can't be done. We all know those people. You get the idea. You're all excited, and you go talk to this person, and they immediately go into shooting it down, right? And they may think they're helping you, 
right? So I'm telling you guys, life is hard enough. It's hard enough to come rolling into work Monday morning positive and on fire and ready to, ready to roll, right? Because life will beat the crap out of you and it doesn't care, <laughs> right? Uh, now, I'm going to finish up with this last little story here. And uh, I actually have an interview at 10 o'clock that I've got to get ready for. Um, so I've got to hop off from here. But uh, I wanted to ask to post this up there. Who is Roger, Sir, Roger Bannister? Uh, I don't know. Any of you guys know who Roger, Roger Bannister is? If you do chime in on that, uh, I, I'd like to see that. Uh, fail fast, fail forward. Chelsea, yes, that's a great comment. I wonder why that did not come through on my, my feet over here. Fail fast, fail forward. Interesting. Um, I have I have um, a program I use, which is what puts these little uh, you know things up at the bottom and all that sort of thing, Chelsea. And I don't know why your comment did not come through. That kind of stinks because I absolutely would put this one on the screen because that's absolutely right. Uh, and and um, fail fast, fail fail forward. Uh, John Maxwell has a great book called Failing Forward. I highly recommend that. Uh, so I wanted to finish with his last point because I've got to hop off. Uh, oh yeah, Randall. Randall hopped on there. What is going on, Randall? Bradley Young, thanks for hopping on as well. Um, the the question up is who is Roger Bannister? I was trying to give folks uh, some time to post if they knew the answer to that. Uh, Sir Roger Bannister, uh, Sir Roger Gilbert Bannister, uh, was a British middle distance runner, and he is famous for being the first person to break the four minute mile. And the the crazy thing about Sir Roger Bannister and the four minute mile is that up until April of 1954, uh, the general consensus was that um, the four-minute mile was impossible. Running under a four-minute mile was impossible. And in March of uh, 1952, 52, is it 52 or 54? I can't remember. Uh, 52, I want to say. Anyway, he ran a sub-four-minute mile. And it was because of that then, the following year, many people broke the four-minute mile. What happened? Once he did it, it became possible in other people's minds. And simply because it became possible in their mind, their body agreed with it. So I'm finishing that up with that thought, guys, in that, in order to make really cool stuff happen, you first have to believe it's possible. I believed it was possible just to reach out to Vancouver Sleep Clinic and ask for an interview. Why not? You know what? I asked for an interview with like, I don't know, eight other semi-famous people. And uh, I got one reply back from their management staff that basically said, yeah, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> But who cares? I believed it was possible, and I got someone to do it. So why not? What do you believe is possible? What is it that you are going for? Right? I think you should dream. I think you should write it down. I think you should go for it and surround yourself with positive people uh, that believe it's possible too. And when you fail, just continue to fail forward. Most of the people who cross that finish line uh, everybody just sees the finish line and says, he's so lucky, which drives me crazy. Um, go for it. Surround yourself by positive people. See it in your mind, because whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you are right. There's my, uh, you know, motivational speech for Monday morning, hopefully to get you fired up and, uh, you know, get you hustling along into your, your week. Um, I will wrap up with saying, take care of life insurance. Uh, don't, don't let that get, uh, you know, don't let that get away from you. Don't let that be a surprise that your family has to figure out. And if you haven't yet done that, hop over to my, my website, joeorsack.com. And I'm putting that up on the screen here. Um, hop over to joeorsack.com and get the, uh, hit the get quote button and hit, let me uh, take care of that for you because that's something that you need to take care of. You need to see that happening. <laughs> see that happening. All right, guys, I'm fixing myself, myself some coffee and I'm moving on to get ready for a 10 o'clock appointment. Uh, appreciate you guys hopping on with me and being a part of my uh, life and being a part of my, uh, you know, words of wisdom here. Hopefully they're uh, inspirational for you and uh, 
will help you move into the week with uh, ferocity. See you guys later. I am out.